Hi everyone, it's Peter from PS Sound, usual introduction. Um, and this is now part, whatever it is, read the title please, I don't know because I've taken so many videos of this Magan uh, installation. But this is now about tuning, this is really geeky, so yeah, be careful. If it's too Chinese, then you may run away after two minutes. But many, many of you, I know many of you are interested in what this car and especially the mid-bass through the floor was doing and measuring. So I'm going to show everything to you right now. Okie dokie. So you can see I had many, many measurements. So we run through everything quickly. I have roughly 20 minutes, so I have to get it done quick. But that should be enough for us because the car is going to get collected very, very shortly. It's going back to Ireland. Hippie, hippie, hooray. So, oh my God. Yeah, I had a few measurements. So I always start with measuring the drivers in full range to see what they do. And in this car, obviously, the mid base was the most important thing to see how it can be integrated, what it's capable of. So this is left mid base driver down on the flow. If you don't know how it was installed, please go to the playlist in the description and then watch the previous videos, then you see what I did, but basically it's an IB six and a half inch uh, micro precision five series mid base through the flow. So this is without any EQ in, with a uh, one sixth of an octave uh, smoothing on it. So as we see, it has that rising curve that we really, really need under 200 Hertz. Yes, there's a bit of a dip here at 160 ish, but it's pretty good from, from that point on above 230, sorry, under 230, is functional yes it's probably a bit too much peaky but we will see what it does without um well sorry with with uh, crossover and eqing down to 30 it's solid and it's it's still playing under that pretty well it doesn't you know just drop off the cliff but it's solid uh, it, it, it's ridiculous so that was um left side so this is right hand side in this car the driver's side that doesn't have that peak, but it's it's simple. Um, you don't have that distance in the cabin from uh, driver side, from passenger side. You always have more boost at the low end under 100 hertz. But this one is also pretty capable all the way down to you know 35, 40 hertz. And then we have that dip here. But again, to the time it's it's crossed over, it will be fine. I can integrate it easily. But yeah, we can see that you know above 400 hertz unfunctional because you have so many layers on the floor carpet uh, whatnot above it but I always knew you know it was not meant to be for two-way no way so then after that I had a look at the mid-range drivers what they were doing so this is uh, left mid-range and from 170 ish it's functional all the way up 160 and and yes people run it wide bands um, in some cars really well about three kilohertz it drops slightly in this car um, if I was running a car without tweeters with these I would possibly put it right on the top of the dash and use the windscreen and uh, you would have better response from the top end but even with this you could you could do it uh, you could select a target line somewhere around here you know, EQ down all the peaks and everything and you would have a linear response all the way. Um, so that was left, uh, 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 um, then right mid. It's pretty similar. There are differences around here, but overall about 3K, it's, it's very similar. And the low end response is similar too. Again, right hand side is closer to you. You won't have that much low end response because it's closer to you and the cabin doesn't boost enough. Um, but I can see that, you know, I crossed that 220 LR24 um, up to 3K and it was just fine, but you will see what it's like once it's EQ'd. So then left tweeter and then we have right tweeter. They've crossed that 1K um, just to make sure that, you know, you don't kill them during the measurement. And um, I haven't even checked their FS, but they are pretty solid from like 1.3K. Uh, they have response from that point on. Obviously you don't want to run a tweeter that low. I think it's a one inch tweeter. Um, and I can see that you know, there was, that was a peak about 3K 
up to, from three to six. It's not the tweeter, guys. Never forget what you're measuring is the, the environment. You're measuring the car at listening position. Um, and then top end is, is pretty good all the way up to 18-ish. 17 but you will see what happened after EQing again so that was uh hang on what did i start with then i went on to mid-range yeah i was uh setting up the the mids first so i selected the 220 to 3 kilohertz lr24 and then that was after EQing you can see that i got rid of all those huge dips and peaks and i got something way more linear i didn't go absolutely crazy you could spend more time with it and then you could get rid of all those little things but it's also important what the speakers do in a pair so then that was right with the crossover and then right with eq and then the aim is to make them as similar as possible so you don't have anything huge peaks and dips one side to the other compared to each other because then if you have a, a peak let's say on right hand side with the mid at one kilohertz plus 6 dB, it's gonna pull everything away when you have music playing in that range. Imagine a female vocalist, you know, gets into that uh, frequency band and then everything is gonna to shift to that side because you have a peak there. So you wanna balance out left and right as much as possible. So once I had left and right, then I measured the pair, how they were behaving, and they got a bit more uh, attention, working as a mid-range, then you see that it's curving down, but it's characteristics to uh, link with really um, crossover because it, it cuts already 6 dB at the crossover point and then 24 an octave lower. So it's ideal for what we need to integrate it to the mid bass and then from that point on to the tweeter. So then we had left bass with the crossover. It was crossed at 50 to 220 with LR24 again. And then with the EQ, yeah. As you see, I didn't keep all that huge peak. I selected my target line, and it has that still has that rising response down to 55. It's pretty good. And then you will see that as it slopes down, it's, it's not going to be such a big issue. Once they play together with the mid range, it's going to be nice and linear. And then right base that had a big peak over there, so. Um, from that we managed to get this so this is left and right matching really well and i think i hardly needed any well probably i had five bands on left and then three bands on the right hand side mid base not too many and i got the curve that i needed that's all i needed so then once the mid base was done then um we had the base pair because this is now here what you see is the mid pair all right so I take the individuals out. So this is what I need now. On the 200 hertz, you will need this rise. It depends on personal preference. You know, people say 3 dB per octave, the lower you play, you know, from 200 to 100, you need 3 dB more, from 100 to 50, you need another 3 dB and so on. To the time you get to 20 hertz, you may have 15 dB more compared to 200 hertz. But some people like even more bass, some people like it just you know more linear uh, it also depends on uh, listening circumstances when you drive and you have a loud car with big engine noise you will want more bass otherwise it's going to disappear but when the car is stand still and you want to listen to really great recordings reference recordings you won't need that much of a rise on the 200 hertz that's for sure so once we had mids and mid bass playing together yes i don't talk i never to really talk about timing but you have to uh, apply time alignment between left and right drivers and then you have to apply the time alignment between the pairs as well the pairs have to play in time as well so once that's done you can see they beautifully sum and they follow the curve um, and actually i made a measurement out of phase now if i take those out you see the difference when they are not in phase you flip the polarity on, on the pair of mid bass or on the pair of mid range you have a huge cancellation bang it's an easy trick um you know, if you're not really sure whether the, the drivers are in phase just flip the polarity and then if if the timing is correct you should have a huge dip 
This is now on a one sixth of an octave, but if I was looking at it in high resolution, then it would show that, you know, it's pretty drastic. Hang on, 148. Yeah, it's pretty big. And then you would also hear it very, very easily that your lower mid range just disappears. So that was just a little trick to show once the pair of speakers work together, they should sum up and follow the curve. Then from that point on, we went to Twitter. So this was left Twitter with the crossover and from that I had with EQ in. Much more linear. And then again, right Twitter, quite peaky in that area. And because on right, the tweeter is a bit more off axis from you because you don't want to blast everything really on axis onto your rear because then the side window is going to have even more problems for you. Um, so we wanted to stay away from that, but I could have that roll off on the top end. Some people like that roll off, I don't. If you want that detail and you want to hear everything what's on the recording, I would keep it linear all the way. But again, that's also down to personal preference. Don't use my word that, you know, every single system has to be linear. On some, on some, I can't even talk. On some systems, actually you need rays on the top end, depending on what drivers you use and what location they are in. Um, so with EQ in, this is what I got. They match really, really nicely. And then you have the tweeter pair. Yeah. So now this is mid bass and mid range together. That's the tweeter together. And then we come to the front, everything playing together. Yes, this could need a bit more work. Probably this crossover point on, on the tweeter is not fully cleared out. Um, this was a quick tune and it sounds great already, but if you want it to go really, really anal, then yeah, you could spend more time EQing. You always have to EQ all the way down to, you know, down to, to you know, at least an octave lower than, than your crossover point. Because people think, you know, you cross the tweeter at 3K, ah, you don't have to worry anything about anything that happens under, under that. Well, if something plays here and peaks here, that's gonna have an effect in that register where your mid-range plays as well, because they will play together. Never forget that. Unless you use such a um, steep crossover, you know, like 148, that they have not much interaction between each other. Uh -uh, but I wouldn't do that. So that's our front. And then we get to sub. Ooh, that was high level on the sub. We have a lot of headroom on it. So, Let's see it. Okay. So yes, it had big peaks. One at 32-ish, then another one at 50. It's a short car, so that's due to that. Then a drop in, and that's slight cancellation point at 70. In longer cars, it's around 55 or 60 Hertz. In this one, it's, it's around there, but nothing to worry about. It was crossed at 50 Hertz. Um, and then to the time the level was set because this was way too high level and that was with the 50 hertz crossover because the previous was measured with 100 I wanted to see what it was doing in the car and as soon as you know the crossover is set on it don't have that much peak already but the level is still high and then after EQing I got rid of those big peaks and full house but that was it looks like that was measured in on slightly higher level because then the whole spectrum raised I probably changed the measuring level yeah quite likely yeah because instead of pulling the sub down it looks like no I pulled the sub down and I raised the level for the measurement yep yeah. but then this is what we have for the full spectrum let's take it down okay so as you see it's on a 5 dB scale now. It's pretty linear from 200 Hertz all the way down. And then we have the rise. I couldn't do much with that because that's the car. It doesn't matter how much EQ you put into it. You won't really hear that at 41. Um, but other than that, it rises beautifully. It does a good job with that. 
And yes, this sub is playing the lows. I was playing one of the Eminem tunes the other day, which has like a 16 or 18 hertz drop in it for a few seconds, and it's moving a fair amount of air. It's really surprising. The whole Q series is great, to be fair. And this sub is, I think this 12 inch Helix Q12 is in um, 35 liter, which in cubic foot is around 1.25, I think. So it's not a huge box, but it's playing really well. So yeah, this is this is the system from all those crazy crazy measurements. So as you can see, you know, balancing the system out is super important. Go to the description, guys. There are a few more tuning videos where I I show tuning in in different cars uh, with different um, processors. I think there's one with the DSP Pro Helix DSP Pro. There's another one with the Zepco uh, Z8 4 Mark II. This was with the Helix V8. Um, and yeah, as I always say, you need a DSP with fully parametric EQ, super important. Because if you have a peak at 5,728 Hertz and you want to target it at that point, then you have to apply the EQ over there. You, you know, you can't use an EQ at fixed points like at 5K or 6.3. What do you do with those when you have an acoustical issue right in the middle of that you can't do anything plus you have to be able to set the quality of the eq the q factor you know whether you need a wide or a narrow uh, eq so yeah it's it needs a lot of work to get used to the measuring software i'm using room eq wizard um people say you know it's just not great it's it's free with a cheap mic okay well I've managed to do really good results with this and none of my customers ever complain who ever got the system tuned. Uh, I'm also trying to figure out how I could help others remotely because I know Nick in the US does remote tuning. There's, there's nothing why I couldn't do it. It's, it's rather just time. But um, yeah, as you can see, tuning, tuning, tuning matters a lot. Never forget to get a good tune on your car. And the more advanced a DSP you have, the more experienced you have to be because uh, now I also noticed that Helix changed quite a lot. They added so many other features, which are great, but then it was already a pro DSP uh, for pro users because it has so many features. If someone new gets one of these DSPs, I would run away, honestly. Like now they have the virtual um, routing. It's crazy. I need a bit of time to work around it. Then it's easy. Okay, I also have background in live sound engineering where we have even more complex uh, tasks so you know it's not difficult for me but for beginners helix dsps are now jesus christ there are so many tabs so many settings you're happy if you can get sound out of it let alone you know tune a system with it properly so i'm not saying it's not great but be aware if you're a newbie you will need help don't just buy a dsp and think that that's it you will definitely need a professional a person who can tune it uh, you may have easier job with the Zepco that I mentioned, the Z8 4 Mark II. That's rather simple. There's only one page. You don't have to jump in and out of Windows to set up things. Uh, routing is easy. It has all the features that you need. So that may be easier to start with. And that's pretty much it that I would use on the market. Moscone has all the features, but I just don't want to get used to it. The layout is, is not for me. Um, although they sound good, I, oh, I don't even want to get into the rest this this series is not about that this this video is not about that so this is it i leave it here check out the description you will see many links to other videos uh, other tuning videos as well as the playlist of this installation of this system and then you can see what was done a bit of teaser a bit of feedback from the owner so yeah that's it guys keep rocking it um and so hopefully you you will all have a great sounding car if you don't have yet Speak on the next one. Take care.